word of God. I plan to beat the devil with a short stick, exhort the people of God. Praise God. Just go with me. If you will stand to your feet, go to the book of Jeremiah. We're going to the 15th chapter, and we're going to read verses 15 through 20. I was sleeping the other night, and before I had went to sleep, I asked God, what am I going? And in my dream, that one up there came to me in a dream and put Jeremiah 15, 15 on the wall. I said, God, what room am I? Because I know he ain't writing on my wall at home. <laughs> but I went to, when I woke up, I began to search and search, and God began to speak. So let's read the word of God. It said, O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that, know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy words was unto me the joy and rejoicing on my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. 17. And I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand, for thy wills, thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuseth to be healed? Will thou be altogether unto me a liar, and as the waters that fail? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, if thou return, then will I bring thee again to thou salt stand before thee. Shalt stand, excuse me, shalt stand before thee. And if thou take forth the precious from the vow, thou shalt be as my mouth, let them return unto me, but return not unto them. And I want you to emphasize his. And I will make thee unto this people a fence brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you. We praise you, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to be your mouthpiece. Today I say I die unto self, God. Let Emma decrease and Jesus increase. Let your word arise. Let your enemies be scattered. Move for your people, God. Move for me, God. Move because you're God all by yourself, God. God, we take authority in this place as we yield and surrender your word. We say, have your way. Withholding nothing, we give it all to you. And we say, move this day. Speak this day. Have. I'm available for your use, Master. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If I had a subject, I would say, God said, I will. From Genesis to Revelation, God's been speaking to his people. I will. I will. Just when you think it's over, God's still saying, I will. Hallelujah. In Genesis 3.15, he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God's saying, I will. He has not changed. He's still the same today as he was yesterday and forevermore. He's still saying, I don't care what it looks like, I will. I don't care what it feels like, I will. Oh, glory be to God. He's saying, I will, but what would you willing to say? When he say, I will, would you say, it's okay, God, go ahead. He said, I will. You in your quiet place, you in your, your secret place, and you in your hidden place, you in your far place. And it doesn't look, it looks like the world. We look around. I give God praise because I came here, and I'm going to show you the journey. I came here because my youngest son just had his first child, and in Birmingham, so Granny had to come and spend some time with the baby and the family and minister there. But between me getting on the bus from the airport, staying in Birmingham, taking 
we call them Ubers. I guess y'all still call them Lips to Ubers. And then here, every Uber I got into, man was complaining. They complained about the prices. They complained about the taxes. They complained about the government. They complained about the street. They complained about the trip. Nobody was complaining about sin. You complain about natural things when we got a sin problem. But God said, I will. I listened. And I said, well, to God be the glory. Let God be God and every man a liar. I'm visiting. I know we got a sin problem back in America. And I know this ain't my territory. This is my go through pastures. But I listened. And I just said, God, take the scales off their eyes. I never missed a meal I wanted to eat because God provides. I told Pastor yesterday, I avoided some things because I like to travel. But every plane ticket I wanted, God provided. We just got to be in position. We got to understand the will of God. We got to understand that God said I will. Not that I will what you want. I will what I said the word would say I would do. I told you I ain't come to be long. I, I'm on a time frame. I'm going to look over here every now and then. I'm going to bring this thing. I'm going to land this plane shortly. I come to tell you what God will do in three points. Catch a hold. Find yourself in your place. I may not call your name, but call your position. You said you're warriors of God. You're men of valor. You're women of excellence. You're virtuous women. There's a place for you in the kingdom, and there's a word for you. Because God's saying, I don't care where, whether your dog is on one end or your Anna on another or your Deborah in the center. There is a position and a place. And where your position and place is in the kingdom, God said, I will do some things. But you got to be willing to go. Why is it so easy to go? Because God said, I will. Point one. God said he would deliver his people. Verse 19 said, God, verse 19 that I read to you, therefore, thus said the Lord, if thou return, where'd you go to? You can't return if you hadn't left something. Israel left God. They, he left, they left God's word. They left God's authority. But if you will return, this is what God said to his people. If you will return, then I will bring thee again. In other words, baby, I'm going to bring you closer. I know you strayed, but don't worry about what you did. I don't worry about what you're coming back to. If you will return, I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. It's better to stand before God on this side of eternity than on the other side of eternity because on this side of eternity is still grace. On this side of eternity is judgment. If thou will return, I will bring thee again. And I will take forth the precious from the vow. I don't care what your situation looks like. There's something precious in you. If you got the word of God in you, you got the blood of Jesus. It's precious. It's powerful. God said, I will deliver my people. <laughs> I will restore the remnant. I want to let you know that every king Uriah in your life that has risen up from this point on must die, shall die, will die, has died for some. God wants you to see that, that his, his temple his glory fills your temple. But you got to return. If you are willing to return, I will, I will bring you to me. You know, as flesh, you vex us. We like, mm-hmm, I'm through with that. And my favorite scripture, he told me, shake the dust. But thank God he's not shaking the dust from us. That he's still giving us a chance to come back home. 
Come back to the fold. Come back to your first love. Come back to your purpose. Come back to your destiny. Come back to the design I have made. Matter of fact, come back to the potter's wheel. Let me mold you, make you, shape you all over again. Because I will huh, deliver my people. I don't care what your struggles are. What he didn't tell you, I'm an educator, I'm a teacher. So let me just speak to the young people. Young people, mama and daddies, grandma, grandma was a little easy. Grandpa was a little easier because they done raised mama and daddies. It looks like they putting too much a demand on you. But if you suffer with Christ, you'll reign with him. Young people, heed the word of God. The world looks good. We likes the clothes. We like the music. I like them too. I'm going to be delivered from shopping eventually. I ain't say today. But the word of God is the only thing that's going to stand forever and stand when you don't know how to stand. Young men, I'm looking at these young men. Generations are in your loins. But if you don't come to God, the enemy will steal it. But today we declare that every enemy of your soul be destroyed and terminated in the name of Jesus. Every young woman in this place, we decree and declare the word of God said the king's daughters are most glorious. You'll carry yourself. Because he said, I will preserve you. I will keep you. I will deliver you. Hallelujah. If you want to be kept, he'll keep you. If you want to be delivered, he'll deliver you. You just got to want some things of God. The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. You ain't got to go after the music. You ain't got to go after Hollywood. You ain't got to go after the stars or the glamour thing. It will come to you. I'm a living testimony. It will come to you. My first paycheck in Anguilla, I sat in the car and cried. I said, is this the money I'm going to make? Why was I crying? Because I wasn't used to it. But I had no bill to pay. I had no bill to pay, Pastor. I still took two trips twice a year. Something went wrong at home. I got on a plane and went home. Because God provided. All he required of me is to give him an eternal yes. He said, if you say yes, daughter, I will provide. I will deliver. I will heal. I will meet you at your point of need. Young ladies, keep yourself. He will deliver. He will give you your Boaz and not his cousins. I'll tell you that video, and you can see me later, and I'll tell you the rest of that. Ah, oh, glory to God. Why would he say he deliver? In Joel 2 and 25, he said, I will restore to you that the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my greatest army, which I have sent among you. I will do these things. He, you know, he, didn't, he didn't stop there. He was like, well, I'm tired. No, nah, because he don't get tired. He don't sleep nor slumber. He went on down to 28 and said, and it shall come to pass afterwards, I will pour out. I, Amen. not Emma, the Lord God, yes. will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. That's why you got to line up with the word of God. Because there's a promise on your life. Whether you know the word or not, the enemy knows that the God that you serve, the God of your forefathers, has made a promise to you, and he's not the son of man to lie, nor the man to repent. He will bring it to pass. He will. Our God said, I will pour out my spirit. You don't need Beyonce. You don't need Rihanna. That spirit is of something else. But Jesus 
the spirit of the living God shall he pour out on this generation if you're willing to receive him. He said, I will, gather, will also gather all nations and I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and my heritage of Israel whom thou have scattered among the nations and parted my land. When I was ordained pastor, I was, the scripture that I was ordained was what God gave me, that I've called you to the nations. And I told my pastor, which he knows, Pastor Ambrose Richardson in Angola, I said, I'm not looking for your pulpit because I go to one every day. I speak to nations every day. I said it, you know something, we say some things and we really don't know what we're saying, but we believe God. That was one of them times. I had, as I was in Anguilla, I'm a counselor at school. I was at Campus B. And my classes were sectioned by countries. I had five countries, countries that I had been to that were very precious to me. But they were required pastor to open the, the day, the class, with scripture and prayer. In the month of September, I read the scripture, I model praying. October, I don't do it. You do it. The deal was, if you ever came to class and didn't know a scripture, you had to write down 10. And you couldn't give me Genesis 1 and 1, nor um, <laughs> John 3, 16, because you learned that in primary school. One particular day, and this is the revelation of God. One little boy I sat in a group called Kenya, and he didn't have a scripture. I asked the people in his group, anybody else got one? They didn't have one. This is the revelation God gave me to show me what God would reveal his word to you. I said, baby, where are you from? Because you're in Kenya, you just denied them a blessing. That's one country, you just, you just denied a blessing because you're not in position, and you're not prepared with the word. He said, I'm from Anguilla, but my mom is from Santo Domingo. I said, that's two countries. That's three countries. So, but, but we don't stand alone in Christ. You agree with me? Come on, talk to me. He had four other people at the table, and they may have a scripture either. So I start calling out their countries. I said, my God. Then I got hold of go say, survey the room. When I got through it, I ain't going to tell you no lie. I was shocked that in my country, I said, God, this is me speaking to countries every day. What I told them young people and what I tell myself, when I am not prepared with God's word, who am I shortcutting in the gospel? They denied Kenya. They denied what's really the public of um, Dominica, but I said Santo Domingo because of what he said. We, we had some that were sitting there from Dominica. When we started surveying just that table alone, we had several countries. I said, in this one hour, we have denied nations the will of God because we are called to stand in the gap for them. I want you to know I never had a problem again by nobody having a scripture. One little boy told me, I'm going to be the pastor of this class. I said, well, go ahead, baby. Show me your word. He wrote a word. He came prepared every session. God said he will deliver his people. Before I go to point two, he said, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. That's Isaiah 41 and 13. You ain't got to be scared to be, to be God's child. You may not have the boldness I have because you don't have the testimony I have. And I may not have the anointing that pastor has because I don't have his testimony. But I got the same God. Amen. And the same God said, I have no respect to person. If I do it for one, I'll do it for another. The way he clothed your anointing may not be the way he clothed mine because our journey is different. But our destination is the same. Hallelujah. You ain't got to be pastor. But what you got to do is put on your whole armor. Get ready. When you get ready to move for God, you got to be equipped. You got to be dressed. It's good to be Gucci and Versace and whatever. I like looking good. 
I don't have to use them people, though. <laughs> Put on the arm of God. That's going to take me to the next point. Once he deliver you, he not in the finished delivering. He said, point two, God said, I will deliver your enemy into your hand. You ain't got to get a taxi or a lift to go after the enemy. God going to bring them to your doorstep. They at your door anyway. You, some you know, some you don't. But he going to expose. God knows the enemy of your soul. He knows that the enemy wants to sift us like wheat. He knows that Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us, that our faith fainted not. But I'm telling you, Jehovah Gabor fights for us. The God who, when I don't need a lamb, sometimes I need a lion. I don't know about you. I said, God, I know you the lamb and the lion, but today this warfare calls for a lion move. Yes. Yes. When we finish, we can be a lamb. You got to know that Jehovah Gabor fights for you as God commanded Jeremiah not to be afraid of their faces. He said, I will hasten to perform my word on your behalf. Not because you're so good, not because you so I'm because you in his will. He will hasten to perform his word, which will cause his your enemy to be delivered. You think something is stopping you? It ain't that stopping you, it's you stopping you. He said, Don't look at their faces. My younger son had a bad habit of being able to look in my face and be in another country. And I kept saying, boy, do you hear me? And one day, I'm talking to the boy. Pastor, we might have been at the same distance that you are. He is looking me in my face. Eyes set on me. And I'm talking to him, but what he didn't hear, it required a response. And when I waited for the response, I'm looking, his eyes is glassy. When I got up and hit him across the head, he never saw me coming. I'm a big woman. I said, boy, when I talk to you, set your eyes and your heart on me. If you're out of order, take the chastisement and do better. God said, daughter, when you're out of order, take the chastisement because I chastise those I love and do better. Because I will. See, you got to be in the right position. You got to be in the right place so God can deliver your enemy so your enemy don't overtake you. Because when you out of the wheel and you out of the word and when you out of position, you on the flow of being destroyed. That's why we got a lot. When you hear uh, in the news, five dead, seven dead, our young men, premature death. Because they're not lining up with the word of God. They're in a position they ain't got to be. Because somebody didn't tell them about Jesus or they just didn't adhere to the word of God. Young people, I'm going to say it again. You ain't going to like every time what your mama and daddy said. But if you listen and if you will heed, you'll reap the benefits of obedience. The word of God said obedience is better than sacrifice. And if you're obedient, you'll eat the, f the fat of the land. And mama and daddy, if you got a spiritual mama, spiritual daddy, even your mama and daddy ain't in the Lord. If you got a spiritual, you in the house, you're going to get a spiritual mama and daddy. Take heed. Why will he deliver us? Why did I say put on your whole armor? Because we wrestle not with flesh and blood. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. You can look like Esther, but even she was required to go to war. You can be dapper and have authority, but even she was required to go to war. You can be David and be in the wrong position, but still God said you still got to go to war. Thanks to God, we go into war with the enemy of our souls, but if you trust God, you already got the victory. You just got to show up. Show up with your weapons. The blood of Jesus is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Hallelujah. The liquid fire of God is a weapon. 
called for the west winds of deliverance. Luke 12 and 54. It's a weapon. Get in the word and know your weapons. Men take guns, but you can say a word to call the gun to backfire. I told Albert when I was in Kenya in 89, I looked around, didn't see no lights. A car, what they call it, Matatu, which is an African bus in the countryside. When they opened the door, the guy had an AK-47 in my face. But I testify everywhere I go, between me and thee was the angel of the Lord. The man never saw me. I'm convinced. I never said a word. He had a flashlight, but there was a white angel, there was a white mist. I ain't said a white angel, a white mist that I knew was the angel of the Lord. I had before I had made that trip, and I was responsible for 13 college students. On me, I had over five thousand dollars. I had 13 passports, 13, 13 plane tickets. And the young girls I was walking with back to the to the school had gone, they didn't even, I looked. They were skipping loop in their little world, talking their junk and not knowing that I'm being accosted by the enemy. But God. But God. I didn't know what I know now, but the weapon I had on me, when they pulled up, I was singing praises. That was the weapon that they could not stop. It wasn't because Emma's so good and I'm so anointed. I was just in position and didn't know I needed a position to be in. God said he will deliver your enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know. Mama can do it. Daddy can do it. Joshua 1 and 5 said, There should not any man be able to stand before thee in the days of thy life. For as I was with Moses, so... I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. I don't know who's gone before you in the gospel that you honor. I know your father. We've shared yesterday. But I'm telling you, if you don't know who else been your natural, let me tell you who went on in the spiritual. It was a man called Jesus of Nazareth. Say, if you killed his temple in three days, I'll raise it up. So if you can just trust what has gone before you, so was he with the Israel of the day. So is he with Revival Tabernacle Amen. this day. Amen. Your name is not by chance. He's telling you, I'm going to bring a revival because I'm going to deliver your enemy unto your hand. God, how you going to do it? He said, behold, I'll send a blast upon him. And he shall hear a rumor and shall return to his own land. And I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. God thinks so highly of you, revive a tabernacle. The enemy you come ain't even fit to die on your land. They got to go back to their own mess. You come from this mess, return to your mess. But God said, I will send a blast. He going to send a blast of the Holy Ghost. It may be the east wind, the west wind. It may be sea quakes, earthquake. But God is going to do it because he said, I will deliver your enemy. Hallelujah. And if you can trust God to deliver your enemy, he said, behold, I'll do a new thing. Point three. Behold, I'll do a new thing. Why am I giving you revival? Because I'm going to do a new thing in the earth. I'm going to do a new thing in revival, tabernacle. I'm going to do a new thing in the sons and daughters of, of the saints. I'm going to do a new thing. Shall you not know it? Open up your spiritual eyes and see the glory of God manifested in this house. See the glory of God manifested in your lives. He going to, mothers and fathers, he going to cause your, he going to cause the north to give up. The east and the west and the south shall not hold back. Your sons and daughters must come back, shall come back. Hallelujah. 
Some of you mothers been tearing for years. Whether a son or daughter locked up or, or locked down. Captivity is captivity. You can walk away in the fresh, natural, get on the bus and still be in captivity. But God said, behold, I do a new thing. But saints, we got to be in position. We got to trust. We got to be on guard. We got to be looking for the new thing. And we got to willing to do what he said in the old stuff to get the new stuff. He said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves. Hallelujah. Turn, 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 turn. Turn, turn, turn. turn, turn. Hallelujah. Turn from their wicked ways. Oh, glory be to God. Seek my face. Don't cause God to get you in a situation you can't do nothing but call on him. Call on me before you get there. And he'll meet you. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll carry you when you feel faint. He said, but I will, I will. When you do the things I require, I will hear from heaven. Heal your land. Forgive, forgive, forgive. I, don't, I like to say that part. I will hear from heaven and forgive your sin. And then I'm going to heal your land. I will. What we encounter, inflation ain't inflation. Some people say COVID, the new thing, uh, pre-pandemic, we went about church as business as usual. We came to church. During pandemic, we became the church. When the doors weren't open, we still had to get to our corner. And we still had to find God and say, oh, God, oh, God, save me. Oh, God, deliver. Oh, God, heal. Oh, God, manifest. Tabernacle means you pick up and you keep moving for the will of God. You ain't, you're, 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 not, you're mobile, you're mobile, you're mobile. Why are you mobile? Because the harvest is great, but the labors are few. And you got to be willing to go where the war is, where the fight is, because you come with victory. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to admonish you. Put on your whole armor. Walk in expectancy. Know that a new thing is a new thing. It's nothing you have never seen. Eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what God is going to do in this new season. But I admonish you to tell God with your whole heart, whatever you're doing this season, don't do it without me. God, if you're moving, move. Let me move with you. Let me be in the right frequency to hear you and to see you with the spiritual eye. That God said, move left, I'm going left. If he said, go right, I'm going right. If he said, hold up, daughter, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, stand still. Stop getting in a hurry to do nothing. When God has a design already, Tabernacle, God has need of you. He calls you to be a prayer station. One of the greatest weapons. Don't take it lightly. Souls, when you take a shortcut, souls will die. When you take a shortcut, deliverance will be held up. But if you plant your foot flat, Rooted in the word of God. I know that I know. God said I will. Deliver my people. I will deliver the enemy before you. And when you think the battle is over. He said don't worry about it, baby. I got a new thing for you. When you think you're tired. God said don't worry about it. I got a new thing for you. It may be a new weapon. It may be a new battle. And it's just, but it's just a new victory. That's all it is. It's just a new victory. 
Will you serve him with your whole heart? Will you surrender with your whole heart? Will you let him be God and every man a liar? Will you let God arise and his enemies be scattered? Don't try to scatter them for yourself. I've been there. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. You get scattered. It's not that God is coming back for a remnant. God is already here for this remnant. Will you be the remnant that, he's, that he has come back for? Will you serve him? Will you be clothed in his glory and his righteousness? Will you, pu will you put the enemy to flight, regardless of your age from zero to 120? Will you do what God said? Because if you are willing to do what God said, God said, I will. We'll hold no good thing from you. I laugh and joke when I tease one of the teachers in my, in my class. And I said, the first tattoo Jesus did, God did it. He said, I'll tattoo your name in my hand. They put in the wrong tattoos, but I ain't going to go there today. That ain't my mission. He said, I'll uphold you in my righteous right hand. No one can pluck you out of his hand. So why are you making it so difficult to get to his hand? When he already predestined you before the foundation of the earth. This ain't a new word. This is just a reoccurring word. Because his word is forever established in the heavens and in the earth. Revive a God has need of you. You don't have to be the pastor nor the pastor's wife or the pastor's family. You just got to be in the body of Christ. He has no respect of person. This day, I decree and declare that every enemy at your edge of your breakthrough shall be terminated and destroyed in the name of Jesus. To our young people, God said, you're the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. I decree and declare that he will give you multiple streams of income, witty ideas. He will loan, he will download to you, even in your dreams. You will see visions of how to move for God that the world will say, where you get that from? But you got to be bold enough and righteous enough and say, my God provided Revelation knowledge is yours. He calls the young men because you're strong, not because you're wise. He got the old men for the wise. But he got the young men for the strength. But he calls them to work together. Mothers, he calling you to teach the young women. Not only how to love their husband, but how to dress right, how to live right, how to stand right. But you got to be living right. That ain't my mission today either. That was free. I just gave you that one. God is calling each one of us. And I know for a fact, if you ain't heard yet, he's going to he come to you in your dreams. Sarah was 90. I ain't trying to have no baby at 90. But I tell you, he want to birth something spiritually, regardless of your age. You just got to willing to push. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to the God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your word, for your people, God. Hallelujah. For your promises. Yea and amen. God, we give you all the glory. Be exalted in tabernacle. Revival tabernacle, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, we thank you. We thank you for your word today. Thank you for ministering to the hearts of your people. God, we're praying that whatever you say, it will fall on good ground. 
Amen. You said that you will deliver us. You said you will deliver us from our enemies. That our enemies will be delivered into our hands. Oh God, we are going to be standing still. And we're going to see the salvation of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. The Egyptians we see today, we shall see them again no more. But the Lord will fight for us. Hallelujah. And we will hold our peace. For the battle is not ours. It is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Let this week be a week of victory. Whatever you said, Lord, you are a man to back up your word. It will never return to you void. So we put every situation, every battle, every case into your hands. And we are asking you to perform your word, oh God, for your promises are yes and they're amen. We believe that it shall be done. And we will come back rejoicing and giving you glory. Go with us all as we go. If we absent one, give them the absent portion of blessing. Minister healing today. Oh God, touch your God. Even Elisha right now. Make him every withhold. Everyone, oh God. Everyone who need a healing touch. You know them by name and nature. Raise up everybody today. And bring us back testifying and give you glory. Thank you for the one you use. Point your hands towards her. We pray, oh God, that you will continue to anoint her. Continue to unctionize her, God. Thank you to bless her, our Lord. In every way, Lord, make her a blessing, Lord. Do a new thing in her and raise her up, Lord, to bring hope to your people and bring deliverance and victory to your people everywhere she goes. Have your way with her. And every one of us as we go, in Jesus' name, and we say amen. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.